Yes, people, welcome back to the show. We're here for the Race for Europe show. Got a full panel, a full lit panel. Some of us don't want to be here. Some of us do want to be here. And some of us, it's absolute privilege and joy to be here tonight. Big up Pete, big up LB, big up Maz, big up Billy, big up Errol. And it's a Dan show tonight. Dan United, Dan Lawless. Are you right there, Lawless? Listen, I'm here under protest. That's all I'll say. Under... <laughs> you, don't, you don't look too well there, mate. You don't look too well. I mean, I, I expected Dan United to not be smiling, but, you know, he's given up now, it seems. But Lawless, it's, it's not looking good for you, mate. We'll come back to you, Lawless. We'll give you a few minutes just to chill for a bit, just good. to stew while we talk Man United. And uh, I'm sure you've got something to say about Man United as well, bro. You know, <laughs> oh, I've got Don't worry. Don't worry, I've got energy there. That, that's I've res- that's my energy reserves. <laughs> this is this is what we like to call projecting, mate. Because you are in the fucking mud, you're coming for someone else. And I've seen this for the last twelve months, mate. So you do your worst. You do your worst. Well, let's not start with Lawless. Let's let him have a couple of minutes to chill. Let's start with LB because the one the Manchester derby, and. Uh, I've got to say, LB, I watched the game and I know people were saying City were lit and it was great, but I've seen City play a lot better than that, man. And uh, it was a walk in the park for Manchester City because of a certain Manchester United. Um, having said that, I thought Bernardo was unreal, man. It was like it was a training game. I thought Bernardo Silva was class. Haaland did his business and, mate, it was boys versus it was boys versus men, wasn't it? Men v boys, as they say. Um, what do you make of it, bro? Uh, I want to thank you from from Dan. Um, yeah, yeah, I want to thank you, bro, because you should be thanking our football club for not completely humiliating. I mean, if we turned up, bro, we would have hit double digits. We would have hit double digits easy because you was that bad. You was that bad. And I, I think you should be thanking us, man, for, 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 for taking mercy upon your football club. Your, your club is finished, mate. It is rotten to the core. There's not a single thing at your club that is that that works that makes sense. You know what I mean? The, the club is it's done. It's it's over. The project is over. You had your time with Ferguson, and now I mean the great historic Manchester United have only got three Champions Leagues. People, you know what I mean? We're already on one. We are catching you up. Liverpool is the team with the Champions League history. Dan's only got three. We're already on one. And soon, mate, we'll be creeping up on them Premier Leagues. Because Pep Guardiola ain't going anywhere, mate. He ain't, he, he ain't going anywhere. And what were you singing on 20 times, 20 times? We will be there. We will, we will be there. So, a thank you, I think, is in order, like I say, for, 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 um, for having mercy on his football club. But, um, yeah, it's just it's embarrassing, really. I, I said to Saeed today, I think um, Man United are embarrassing our a great city, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we're holding it down. Um, yeah, seriously, man. Seriously, it's yeah, like it's supposed it. to be the capital, capital football capital of England, but mate, it's not. You're letting us down. You know what I mean? We try to hold it down, and you know the spectacle for the neutrals. I also want to just apologise to Dan Potts, Errol, Lawless, Pete, Maz, and Billy because you guys probably wanted to see a great game. Well, I'm afraid, you know, what I mean, there's only one team that that turned up. And um, so, yeah, the spectacle was ruined for you guys. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's the same old sort of stuff. We turn up, we perform. We're, we're a club on the up, constantly trying to win trophies, constantly trying to invest in the future. Constantly and, trying um, to dodge charges as well. But, well, you know, I mean, that's... that's. I mean, there's only one club this season that has breached FFP, Dan, and that is not Manchester City football. That is your football. Correct, club. mate. And we take that. We take that fine. We're looking forward good. to yours, there, mate. We're looking good, forward to good. yours. I'm glad you take the fine, mate, because cheating ain't, ain't no joke. Not that we can afford the fucking fine, might I add? Not that we can afford the fucking thing. <laughs> we've, uh, had to, we've had to. We've had. We've had to. We've had to mortgage the car park. I had to pay that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, Listen, on a real. It, on a real though, the, the, cl- the club is 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 in a disastrous state. Um, I'm, there's, there's so much wrong with it that I'm not entirely sure how you fix it. The manager is a, is a fraud, in my opinion. Not sure not, he knows what he's doing. Uh, the owners are shocking. The board, uh, I don't even know what the board are doing. The stadium's falling apart. You know, Ronaldo spoke on the training ground. The training ground is outdated. You know, everything is just in the past. 
Man United is just it's historic. You know, what I mean, that it needs investment. It needs modernising. But that's going to take time, and it needs an owner who's willing to put the their hand in the pocket. So listen, I don't see. I, I've said to be fair, you know, what I mean, put banner aside. I've said today that United will continue to still win trophies. They'll still pick up the odd FA Cup, the uh, the odd uh, Carabao Cup. They'll they'll qualify for Europe now and again because of the size of the club, they've got the money. They will still pick it up. But in terms of continued success, in terms of competing year in year out for Premier Leagues, for Champions Leagues, with this current setup, they got no chance. Mm. Listen, serious question to the panel, other than Dan, because I want to get Dan's opinions on this afterwards, right? But serious question to the panel. I looked at this Ten Hag situation when he came in at Man United and thought it might have been a little bit similar to Unai Emery. Because when Unai Emery came to Arsenal, it was a complete mess. Ownership, they didn't own the club. It was like majority shareholders. We had Hus Farmi and Rao San Leahy in the pockets of Kia Drapskin. We had Hus Farmi. We had uh, Ivan Gazidis was still there. He wanted Zaha. We give him Pepe. He wanted party. It was Ceballos. He wanted a Pomacano. It was David Luiz. It was a mess, right? Absolute mess. So I thought maybe that could be similar with Ten Hag, that the ownership's a mess, the board's a mess. We've always spoken about all the problems. But I've got to look at this manager and ask a question. What the hell is he doing? Because for me now, this ain't just about the Glazers. This ain't just about the stadium falling down, the training facilities, the board not having no, having, having no sporting director. Ten Hag's on the pitch here picking... Victor Lindesoft at left back and saying that he can't put Varane in. Tactic? Harry Maguire and Evans? Tactic? You know Harry Maguire and Evans were the Leicester City pair under Clude Powell in 2018 and now they're the Manchester City centre-back pairing. What the hell Manchester is going on? Mate. City wouldn't be seen dead with them, mate. <laughs> well, it is absolute shambolic and Ten Hag, I've got to say it, I'm going to call him out now because I don't understand what he's doing there. Amrabat comes off. Mount wasn't starting. He's a £65 million player. He comes on. I feel sorry for that Hoyland. And the two players I'm going to be looking at, Rashford and Bruno. Disgrace. Absolute disgusting performances. And if I'm a United fan, I'm putting a lot of pointing fingers at them. Because we all know Maguire and Evans are crap, right? We all know Lindelof shouldn't be playing left back. We all know that Amrabat's just come to the club and that Mount's trying to find his feet and that Hoyland's a new striker up top. But when your goalkeeper, who's been your worst pl player this season, is turning out to be your best player, you've got problems. And when you've got Rashford and that disgrace who's got the armband on called Bruno, who, by the way, both of them hung your heads in serious shame because they were a disgrace, man. So I've got to ask the panel, Ten Hag, is there serious questions now? I, I, I think I'll start with the comments he made yesterday after the game. I think someone asked him, I'm paraphrasing this, I don't know the exact quote, but they essentially asked him, do you want to have the same playing style as you had at Ajax? And he was like, no, I don't want to do that. And I think that straight away was like alarm bells. Like, why would you... I think that's what Man United got you in the first place for because they saw you're attacking good football at Ajax. So the fact that you don't want to play that, he said it's a different system, a bit more direct at Man United. And um, he claimed that he had a good... Well, he had a good season last season. He sort of, you know, used that as an excuse. So I just find it really weird that you get a manager in who's... You've brought him in because he's got a good playing style. And I think... Gary um, Carragher mentioned it yesterday. He's got there's no identity in Man United. Like the way they play, there's nothing, there's no identity there. So it's like you've been brought in to implement a style, a system, but it's like he just hasn't done that. And it's like where if you're if you're a Man United fan, you're thinking, well, what have you come in to do? <laughs> you've, you've been you bought all these players. You know, like, you bought Anthony for ninety million, and he's absolutely shocking. He's one of the worst players I've seen at that price tag ever. He, it's just like well, who, you're bringing all these players from Real Madrid, the and then they're not performing. And there's no style, there's no system. So, so as, as a manager, what, what are you actually doing? What are you doing in the training? You can blame the, the stadium falling down, but if you're not getting results on the pitch, what, what's going on? So I just think it, I think it is massively down to Ten Hag and he's just not he's not implemented anything since he's come in, which is a really worrying sight for any Man United fan, I think. Yeah, man. Errol. Yeah. The the difficult thing is from a Man United fans' perspective, I think is until they can accept that, you know, what happens above, they, they can't they can't uproot the Glazers anytime soon. They're not getting rid of them. You've almost got to accept that you've got to play with the hand you've been dealt at times. You know, Arsenal have had to do it and, and, and sit through it with with your ownership. Liverpool had to do it. Newcastle had to do it under, under Mike Ashley for the period of time. You've got to deal and play with the hand you've been dealt and at some point it goes on to what Maz is saying there really 
what's this what's the style what's he implementing i i i think back to when, when clock first came in and he, he didn't come in mid-season he came in in, in an october so we probably played about six to seven weeks we have a footy but it just wasn't working on the bread brendan at the time we've pulled the trigger because he's been available and we went for Jürgen Klopp. and that first four months that he was that he that he had us he didn't have any players that he wanted to really play the style of football that he wanted to play at Liverpool Football Club. But we went and drew against Spurs. I think we had a 1-1. I think he, he must have got like three, four draws on the bounce. But all of a sudden, towards the back end of that first season, there was just a few signs and a few glimpses of what it is he's trying to implement, what what he wants this team to do going forward. And he didn't have the players. You know, he, he was making do with what he had. But he was adamant that I would rather play a style or attempt to play a style, even with the players that can't execute it to the highest level, than try and shoehorn these players and make something work for the crop of lads that, that, that I've got with me. Ten Hag's doing neither. He's not sticking to his guns and saying, right, I've got a style and the, the, the best players that can imitate it and show me what they've got will get, get, will get game time in minutes. And he's not even saying, well, let me actually just see where you guys all fit and actually you, you play to your strengths. He's doing none of those two things and he just looks lost at the moment. He looks like he is absolutely neck deep in fucking man, you shite. And no matter what he does, it's not actually going to save his job at this rate. He is walking himself into the sack and it's unfortunate because I don't think the majority of Man United fans actually want him to be sacked. I don't think they want to do the whole rinse and repeat process all over again because they know how that story goes. They know how it starts. They know how the middle like, and they know how it ends. They would rather at least allow him to do what he's been employed to do and come in to do. But because he's not showing any signs, people are getting sick and tired of it. You can't keep going back to the same week in, week out, getting the same results, playing the, not necessarily the same style, but playing in the same manner where there's no desire there's no, you're not battling for the second balls. You're getting bested by teams that, you know, there's no, there's no shame in getting bested by City. All of us are, 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 at some point on this panel, I've taken a hide into City at, at one point or another under, under Pep Guardiola. There is no shame in that, but there is shame, as you say, Potter is being disgraceful and shambolic in the way that you set yourselves up. You've got players like Anthony, fucking petulant absolute petulance from him you've got players like bruno I, I i i stopped myself from tweeting that last night because i didn't i didn't watch the full game so it's hard to just throw out it and reaction things because you're seeing it getting spammed on your timeline but who's a worse captain maguire or bruno who for man you has been the worst of those two because you, with maguire that was a new low all of a sudden you're looking at what bruno's brought to the table he's not added anything he's not majors you know unite behind the cause and get behind something and all fight for this fight for the same you know these are all in it together these are all in the trenches trying to dig each other out the hole he looks like he's just in it for himself and it's all damage limitation it's shocking and i think it genuinely has got to the point where there is that much wrong i remember having a conversation with dan a couple of shows back and i said to dan what ten Hag needs to do if he wants to save his job is ring fence himself with the players he can trust his setup and block out all of the noise even if the noise is coming from the club you just have your crop of lads and say lads siege mentality from now because it's us together and fuck the world and it doesn't look like he's been a, a he's ever been able to do it or b he's even attempted to because everything at the moment that could be going wrong at man united yeah. going wrong while he's at the helm and it's only a matter of time before the implode button is pressed and and that's him he's out the door yeah, man, listen, I, I can't have Billy and Pete with this before I let that and, and Lawless, uh, Lawless and Dan come in because I actually blame some of the section of the Man United fan base here. And I know it's not their fault that they lost the game, but actually, I see a deluded section of them calling for second place. We're going to be fine this year. I can't wait to see what happens. I don't think that City are going to run away with it. I see a lot of people saying Liverpool and Arsenal, <laughs> no chance. Wait till United come lock in. It's Man City we're going for. I see Manchester United fans want Glazers out. Next minute you sign Anthony. Oh, they're spending money. This is good. Sitting on their hands, a new shiny toy. Then when he's no good, oh, we're really disappointed. Hoyland's here. Amrabat, wait till we sort this out. I think... What's actually happening here? Like this is actually quite embarrassing. Your club is a mess. Your owners lack ambition to win. 
They want to spend money. They don't care where it's spent at. They've not even got a footballing or sporting director at the club. Giving it to Ten Hag and saying, you do the right at Ajax. You want to buy all them players and cart them over here. See if you can get them playing for us. What an embarrassment. And Pete, Billy, I'll put it to you two, man. What's your thoughts on that, bro? Go on, Billy. Go for it. Um, well, I, I, I agree. I think Man United fans in general, or the ones that we see at least on social media and stuff like that, somehow you've managed to find somewhat a sane Man United fan. And he's the one here on this panel who will call out the the club week in, week out, in fairness to him. Fuck off, Lawless. <laughs> I, I had a little glimpse over. I saw that face. No, but to be, to be fair, Dan, you, you do call them out week in, week out. You know, you, you brought in Hoyland and it wasn't uh, a case of you going, oh, get in, he's, he's going to score so many goals for us. You, was, you were very um, reserved and you understood that this wasn't going to be an easy season for you. Other Man United fans, as we all know on social media, and as I just mentioned, just getting that fay, getting that mindset of we're Manchester United, we're this big, massive club, we're going nowhere, kind of thing. Well, you actually are. You're dropping off like big time. We're set. Villa are seven points above you in the league at the minute after twelve games or so. You know that that shouldn't be happening, should it? You're, you're Man United for God's sake. Villa are a big club in ourselves, but you're Man United. You're this huge, huge club. But they, and that's where Man United fans on social media think they are. In terms of the actual club themselves, I, it, it, it is just a mess. You know, you've got Gary, um, Gary Neville blaming the owners, not putting any of the blame on Ten Hag. I think he put on Twitter today that it's on the owners for spending the money, it, that it's panic buying. Well, I think if you, if you green light the transfers of, Casemiro and Anthony. Casemiro, I think, did all, did all right last season, didn't he? Um, but the Anthony one in particular, you've got to look back on the manager and, you know, it, it may be a panic buy, but it's the manager ultimately that has that decision on on, on who they're bringing in. So I think that has to go down on, on Ten Hag. It can't just always be the Glazers this, the Glazers that. Of course, they're, they're a problematic ownership. We all know that. None of us would like the Glazers owning our football club, would we? But it's not all on them. And I think Ten Hag does have to take a lot of the blame. And that's that's starting to come through more and more, I think. Mm. Go on, Pete. Yeah, uh, no, I, I think... I feel, like, I, find... I feel like I'm in an intervention here. This is... <laughs> like interrogation, mate. It's not what we're interviewing. <laughs> no, I think I, I'm not going to go too much into the fans' perspective because I think um, Billy, Billy was spot on. With, with that, but you know, I, I said it last week and I say it again. You know, it's all right blaming upstairs, um, and they are a lot to blame, but not for that performance, not for that performance yesterday. Look, did many people expect Man United to win? Probably not. Um, but the manner in which they got beat that could have been six or seven if it weren't thrown on like easily. Um, and that 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 sits with the manager, um, and you know, I, I do, I do worry. I do worry for for Man United because Billy's made a, a really good point. You know, Villa seven points ahead of ahead of you guys already, um, and there is a drop off, and other teams are starting to really push up there now and genuinely be competitive and looking like it's not just going to be a one season wonder, but actually look to sustain that competitiveness at the top end of the Premier League. And when and when, if they keep doing that, that's going to push. Man United further and further down the road. Um, and Potts, you made a really good point. You talk about the leadership. Um, there is no leaders in that team. There is no ah. leaders there. Nobody <laughs> nobody is good enough to take that armband. I don't care what they've done previously. We talked about your Casemiro's and your Varans and all the rest of it. Right? Yes, they were good players at other clubs, not at Man United. Um, and it's been shown now that it is an absolute graveyard for top players that get paid a crazy amount of money to go and play for Man United, to just sit there and rot. That's basically what it is. Um, and the more that starts to happen, the more that top players are not going to want to go to Man United. I'm not surprised. You know, Bellingham picking up his award tonight at the Ballon d'Or. Like, I'm not surprised he turned down Man United. I'm not. Because um, these these top players now look beyond Man United. As, as, as a money maker, they're still up there. They generate a hell of a lot of money because they've got fans all over the world. But as a genuine team to go to, there are other teams on this panel 
that top players would much rather go to to play their football, that they see their career better spent at another club on this panel than Man United right now. And going back to the manager, I swear, honestly, like it's all well and good saying there's nobody else, there's nobody else. Dan, we had a chat earlier, um, we were trading messages earlier, and you know, I'll let you talk about your manager the same. But the one thing I'll say is, is that it's okay, it's okay saying there's nobody else, but the longer this goes on, the shine on that manager gets wiped away. And no matter what he he, he initially came in for, and the 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 love and the excitement around that manager it quickly gets wiped away and it's being wiped away right now. And the one thing you've got to worry about as a Man United fan, that when that shine wipes away, you've got to think to yourself, is he going to be looked at in the same breath and the same light as he's the guy to take us forward? But equally, is he going to look at the job in the same light and think, you know what, Mm -hmm. I'm going to stick this out? Because it comes to a point where a manager turns around and says, you know what, this is not good for me. I need to get out of here. This is hammering my reputation. Um, and I genuinely think at some point in the, maybe in the near future, that will come to a head. Um, I genuinely, yeah. genuinely believe that. But he needs to take responsibility. He bought those players. He picks that team. He sets the style of play, right? Mm-hmm. And he's got every single one of those things wrong. And only the only one that can blame, that can be blamed for that, in my opinion, along with the player's performance, is the manager not upstairs. It can't be used as an excuse every time. That was shambolic yesterday. It was embarrassing. Also, I think, just quickly, we've got to remember as well, upstairs, you know, the board, they've still outlaid like a billion, I think, in the last however many transfer windows. It's not like, I just don't get this whole narrative of like, you know, they're this awful, of course they are. They Like Billy said, no one wants to be owned by the Glazers. But at the same time, they pumped in a ridiculous amount of money to into these transfers. So you can't be like sitting there going, oh, they're not backing us, you know, blah, blah. It's like, well, you are getting back. You're just not making the right decisions. Ten Hag is not making... Picking, he's picking all these era divisi players that are just coming over and they're awful. Like Anthony, like I've uh, p- said previously, it's just it's just madness to me that, of course, you know, the Glazers are, aren't great, but at the same time, you've pumped a ridiculous amount of money into the club. So why are you not seeing results? Yeah, I, fair play, man. I was just going to say, um, there was a conversation when Alex Ferguson first retired and there was a few Liverpool fans, you know, we're going back, 10, 10 odd years now, a few Liverpool fans are saying were saying that Man United and Liverpool were going to kind of trade places. And what what I mean, what they meant by that is that like, not being in a position to win it to win the Premier League over that period of time. And a lot of Man United fans laughed at it and said, "Now nah, we're not going to go thirty years or whatever." If they keep going the way they are under the Glaziers, and I'm not saying that they're not going to be taken over in the next five or ten years. I'm not saying that at all. But the longer that the Glaziers are in charge and the teams around this panel and others keep pushing up, the gap is going to start uh, yep. being created. It's already started now. Maz, Maz talked to it. Billy talked to it. The gap is already started. And the longer they're in charge, the bigger the gap gets. And they're going to find it really, really difficult. No matter how much money they generate, is to get that back because they've got to start right from the bottom and work their way back up again. Mm, no, facts, man. And no, I've been very... Ten Hag's got blood on his hands. He told us he has come to an end. I've been waiting, <laughs> waiting for a Liverpool Man U title race. Since I could say, I could stick my chest out and say, yeah, Liverpool are about that life. We're about titles. I've been waiting for someone to be able to steer Man U towards it. Ten Hag, he, he, was, the, he was the prodigal son. He was that guy. He's got blood on his hands right now because he's getting mm. all wrong. All wrong, man. Yeah, it really is, man. It really is. Uh, Lawless, before Dan goes on his little rant, um, I suppose you want a word? Do me a favour. Have you got to hand the predictions that we done? <laughs> have you have you got those? Not the, I have not fourth. the updated ones, the I old ones. Fourth. I've got. I said fourth. Well, fourth, interesting. You said fourth. Now, and, then I moved it, and then I moved it a couple of weeks ago down to sixth or seventh, I believe. Right, right. But start of the season. So this is the original fourth that Dan United had. The man that's the level-headed pessimist that downplays Man United, that, you know, he's the realist. He calls out the owners and he's one of the, the proper ones. He's not deluded. And he tried to say to me, oh, I'm saying we're not a big club. 
Man United. You had them fifth. Yeah. That's, what, man, that's what I was about to say. What, where are we going? <laughs> right, where are we going with this? Why then <laughs> do we have to have a fucking crisis meeting every time Manchester United lose a game of football? <laughs> this is reality now. This is normal. Let's stop acting like this is some big yeah. shot. And go round the table and go, oh, the owners, oh, the manager, oh, what's going on? Oh, the, someone's got to just get this club back to where it should be. This is where you should be. Errors come to an end. Yours ended 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Man United lose to Man City. It's another Sunday. It's, oh, they got battered. Yeah, expected that. Who are we talking about next? Hey, what happened? Who played Luton the other day? Right? That's that's where we need to be doing. Why do we every week? Oh, it's deja vu. It, not that it, club in right, ten Lord, years. He's bang on, you know. He's actually bang on. I'd like to point out Lawless. I was mm. expecting fire. I, I actually agree. I've said this week in, week out, mate. So every week I say the same thing. Why do we come to Manchester United? So I don't know why you're trying to portray that I'm every week. Oh my God, we're this, we're that. I said we were. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Caitlin Jenner, such, just, just be quiet a second with your shit glasses. I said weeks ago <laughs> that we were, that we were, <laughs> that we were not a big club anymore. I said this. I looked dead in the camera and I said, Man United fans need to take a big, big look in the mirror. A reality check. We are no longer a big club. I said, exactly like Pete said, commercially, we make a lot of money, but we are still not a big club anymore. Okay? Finances have come out this week, and I'm not going to sweat on the, on the owners too much because I've done that. I've, I've done this. They come out this week. We basically owe, we are 1.1 billion in debt. That's Manchester United. Okay? I, I, I made a joke at, at uh, LB a sec ago saying... The 115 charges. How how are we still running like that? I don't understand how we're still running like that. That's all I'm going to say on the ownership because I've said it every fucking week that this is a cancer, that this isn't working, that this isn't working. But What's yesterday, I can if I can finish third if last can, year. If I finish. You. Yeah, we finished you third, Lawless, because what I said at the start of the season, we finished third because Errol's boys were shit, Chelsea were dog shit. And we managed to fucking scrape it through. We we capitalised on a shit season. Simple but as so that. So did Newcastle. So did Newcastle. They're not complaining. What are you on about? We're, we're, four, no, we're, we're, we're not in the same bracket as Newcastle. Don't bring Newcastle into this. That no, never <laughs> once have said we're in the same bracket. Hang on a second, Harold. So Wrong. so 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 this is where I'm going to move on to. So I have said, and I've been consistent. The manager is not at fault. The manager isn't at fault. There is stuff going on above him that that, that he just has no um, control over. Yesterday was the first time that I sat there. I genuinely sat there and I thought, what the fuck's going on here? This is the... Uh, and you can say the uh-oh moment come against, you know, 7-0 against, against Liverpool. The uh-oh moment for me was yesterday, a day... Where emotion should have should have been there for the players. Players should not just the derby. Right. The fact that you had the legends of the club coming out, okay, their fallen comrade gone. They played like people who didn't know how to play the game. Bruno Fernandez, who I've been a big advocate for, I think when he what he's done since he's come to the club on the pitch, he's scored a lot of goals. He's got a lot of assists. Yesterday, I looked at him and I looked at him with such disdain because. When I think of Manchester United captains, I don't think of people like that. We all say about Harry Maguire being in the mud. Harry Maguire was nothing like that, okay? Harry Maguire was respectful, simple as that. What I see with Bruno Fernandes is someone who, the second it doesn't go his own way, he'll turn on his own players, he will turn on the fucking fans, he will turn on the opposition, and he will turn on the manager. He will flash that look of, what, what, what? It's bullshit. A captain of a football club is there to lead his men, to lead his troops. When it's fucking shit, he is there to pick it up and say, we battle through. We haven't got that with Bruno, okay? The other players that we spoke about, Anthony, you all know my opinion on Anthony, which is why I'm not going to give him too much fucking airtime here. The kick out yesterday, 
Ban him. Give him a free game ban. He should have been off the field anyway. That is absolutely disgraceful. But this isn't the first time he's done it. I've seen him do this for the last 18 fucking months, okay? And there's there's people on Twitter, there's people on TikTok, there's people in the street saying, but it's passion. It's not passion. It's pathetic, okay? Petulance. Sorry? It's petulance. It is, it is, it is. That's exactly what it is. Now, do I do I think Ten Hag will go? I don't. I still don't. I don't. I, I, I'm worried. I'm absolutely worried because LB, I was on your show on, on Friday and I said to you, Lindelof, left back, and you looked at me like I got four heads. I could see it coming. I could see it coming a mile off. The Varane situation, the Regulon situation, I think he's come out and I will say this. I think he's come out and said it's tactical because he can't put anyone else on the bench and we've got no defenders. That's the only reason I think he said it's tactical. I think he's tried to protect the players there. That's all he's done. But to start a game against Manchester City in the manner that Manchester United did, and Lawless, I will actually agree with what you're saying. It was it was just another Sunday. We are used to this now. And this, and this is I'm talking to you, Manchester United fans now, right? I'm talking to all of you. Wake the fuck up, okay? Wake up. Because this hasn't just happened overnight. We can give it ten hard. This has been coming for the last 10 years. Yes, we had a glory year with Jose when we won the, the Europa League, the Carabao Cup, the fucking Community Shield. Yes, we've won an FA Cup with Van Gaal. Yes, we've, we were on that amazing unbeaten run with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, which counts for fucking nothing, but you still fucking applaud it. Yes, we won the Carabao Cup last season. This was coming. This has been coming for so long. And I'll tell you another thing. All you Man United fans out there who sit there and say, do you know what, though? I'll take a season like this if we can get rid of the Glazers. They are going nowhere. And the second you actually open your fucking minds and think about this, if they wanted to go, they'd have been gone years ago. They are staying and they are not going anywhere. Manchester United are not a big club anymore. Lawless, you can try. I get what you're trying to do, but we are not a big club anymore. And the second that everybody fucking realizes that, the better. Because I tell you what, Manchester United are now. We are that club that will rely on beating everybody outside the top six or seven to get our points this season. Our record against the top fucking six and seven will be horrendous. Our record against the top three and four, don't even think about it, okay? This is where we are. This is where we're going to stay. And I will say this. It doesn't matter what manager you bring in. It doesn't matter what manager you bring in. This is always going to happen, okay? It's as simple as that. I'm not going to shout and scream about it because I've done that. I'm not going to sit here and get upset about it because in my own fucking private time, I've done that. And I don't care if I admit that. I have done that because this is my football club. I've watched Manchester United ever since I can fucking remember, okay? And this is about... And people will say, yeah, you were spoiled in the 90s. We were spoiled. We had a generational manager, but that counts for nothing. There should have, there should be no way that Manchester United are in this situation now. But every mistake that's out there to be made, we've done it. And every mistake that's out there that can still be made, we're going to do it. It's as simple as that. Well, you better run, question, well, you better run the rolly. Sorry? Go on, Dan. Go on, Lewis. No, I just want to ask a question. Obviously, you're the rational reasonable Man United fan who's accepted the, the new position. You're not big club anymore except where you are. Would you be happy finishing seventh and winning the Conference League next year? <laughs> As this new Man United, obviously, you know your levels, you know where you're at. Shame. You know, would you, would, would that be good for you? Would you be happy with that? Would you take that? No. In this new, not a big not. club. Of course oh, not. so you're still delusional then. Okay. Not delusional, mate. Just want what's best. We don't settle like West West Ham. We don't go on this fucking 17 unbeaten run and then have it tattooed across our fucking chests. We don't sit there and say before we come live on stream, oh, he's going to call in sick tonight. We fucking stand up, mate. I want I, I want to hear. Wait a second. I want to fucking hear now everything you've got to say because every fucking week this season, I've heard you say, acknowledge us. Put us seven. This is the Man United don't section. No, 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 mate. We've had my say. We've had my say. I want to hear exactly what you're going to say now. Because last week you said to us, I will give you my prediction of the season week 10. Well, guess what, mate? We are in week 10. So let us hear what you've got to say, mate. 
spit those yeah, money. We will have more possession and we will we slap well, away. We we are not losing to Everton. I don't care. I'm not this isn't tactical. I'm I'm not accepting it. There's no reality in my mind where I'm accepting if you lose we to Everton, don't... we we are absolutely cooking you. <laughs> Listen, you could we beating Everton at home, right? I'm not accepting anything less. Everything's going to be back to normal. It's a blip. We'll beat Everton. I'll be there. We'll climb up the table a bit. We've got a favourable run of fixtures. So you're all ready to dance on our graves, yeah? Like, ah, oh, yeah, <laughs> West Ham. Hey, bring it on. No, it's no. not happening. Hey, bring it on. It's not happening. Bring no. it on. No, it's no. not happening. West Ham have just been beaten by Everton, one goal to nil. Nice little one-twos they're making now. Cameron Lewin, Cameron Lewin! You! The shocking performance. You've done it again. Betrayal. <laughs> you, you told me there was no footage this week. Sam, on holiday. Betrayal. Lies. Deceit. What the hell is this? I don't know if you can see my screen. 15.02. I messaged Sam and I told him the exact minute and second you said, we are not losing to Everton. Sam. Snitch. Grass. Snitch. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I told you there was no coming back if you lost to Everton. I mean, the fact that you're even showing your face is is, is a miracle in itself, to be honest with you. Like, I would have went into hiding. They are the worst team about... What's going on with Michael Antonio? What's going on with him? Since he stuck his chest out and said, we're going to finish it over Liverpool, Liverpool ain't going to do shit this season. Has he scored a goal? Has he been involved? Like, your team at the minute, mate... And again, not necessarily again. I feel like it's more you. I feel like someone, I think it might have been Billy that said it last week. You've made West Ham relevant where otherwise it just wasn't. No one was asked about West Ham. The only reason we're asked about West Ham is because you chirp up and you stick your neck out and, and claim that they are or, or they deserve to be mixing it with the big boys. They don't deserve to be mixing it with the big boys. Last year, you were fighting relegation. This year, you're getting beat by teams that are fighting relegation. That is more or less your level. And the sooner you, of all people, recognise that, get a little bit of humble in you, you know what I mean? A little bit of hubris. Use a dictionary. Learn what that one means. Get a little bit of hubris up in that mix. It'll be good for it. You'll be sound, bro. Because, as I say, you aren't awful. You are a decent enough side. But when you're talking about racing for Europe, when you're talking about the biggest competitions, when you're talking about the biggest teams in the country, West Ham cannot be a part of those conversations, respectfully. It's best you put that junior size, 13, age 13, top of Newcastle that you used to rock back on and rep for them right now, because that is your only claim for Europe this season going forward. I'm going to be honest with you. Dan, this is your this is your moment to then flip the question on Lawless now and ask him where they're going to finish this season. <laughs> There's no point, Maz, because you know what he's going to say. Yeah, probably like third, fourth. There's no point. There's no point. And well, Lawless, Lawless is Lawless on pause. Lawless, it's game week ten. It's game week ten. He told us he was. He was giving us a ten game review of whether David Moyes should remain as the West Ham manager or not. And uh, I want to ask you that exact question. Where are you game week 10, brother? <laughs> game week 10. <laughs> game week 10. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. <laughs> <laughs> David Moyes. We've got him. We've got him. <laughs> He's a fraud. He's an imposter. Uh, he, honest, I, I, I'm not, I listen. I'm going to spoil it. I'm not Moyes out because what's the point? There's no point. He's got one year left on his deal, runs out at the end of the season. Unless we're in serious trouble, what's the point of sacking the man? I'm I'm going to just end up being in complete apathy 
at this stage, if this is going to be indicative of how we are this season. We started off so well. We slapped Brighton up. We slapped them up, right? Which So Maz is in the mud. Yeah, we did. We slapped you up at your gaff, mate. Your definition been... of slap up is, but yeah, you beat us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. comfortably, might I add. <laughs> um, we, you uh, yeah. cool. beat Chelsea. You know, we, we beat... Luton, which is uh, a tough game, according to Billy. You know, it's a tough one, so we've got to take some credit for that. But this game, this game was key. We had to win this game. You cannot lose to Everton at home. And this just shows me how limited, how one-dimensional this man is and his system. These are good players. I'm not hearing anything about the squad that we have. We've spent nearly half a billion pounds under David Moyes. Round up, whatever. I haven't sat there with my calculator. Is it that, Lord? We've spent around. So you, you, that? You, you've, How much was it? Sorry, mate. I didn't. What did you say? I didn't. I know, nearly know. half a billion or something. I didn't even know. You spent big, big, you spent big boy big money cash. to not end yeah. up like big boy. You do know this that. Is, is. Yeah, but this is the thing. This is why it comes back to the man in charge. And I've I've been very I've been very tight lipped. I'm trying not to go back to last season. I'm trying not to be Moyes this Moyes Moyes Moyes. You no, know, just review the ten games then. Just review the ten games. We don't care. But the ten games. What did last the ten games show done. us? Last season. We done. are a counter attacking side, and that's it. If you do not want the ball, we're fucked. We are fucked if you don't want the ball. You've given them three points closer to survival. That's what makes it even worse. They, they should be going down. They should be getting relegated. It's their time. And what do we do? Just charity. Perform absolute charity. We, I'm so just broken from this game. Because I looked at it and I thought, okay, the games we've lost. And this is what I said. It changes the context of our season completely. Because we lost against Man City. That's fine. We lost at Anfield. Okay. Expected. You know, we lost against Villa, right? At Villa. They've got a good record there. They're unbeaten in 13 or something, you know? So 12. you go 12. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm predicting your next home game for you. But. This game, we can we can look at them and go look at the teams we've lost to. It's not a big not a big worry, is it? But Everton, that is the game now. After Olympiacos, we needed a response. Now we've lost three on the spin, and the whole season looks different because what we've won one game in our last five. That's not good, and you have no answers. And what he is doing, like the, the team, he this, do you know what worries me even more. The team he put out, the lineup he put out was spot on. It was perfect. And people were saying, this is what annoys me about some West Ham fans. This is the lineup you all wanted. He put the team out you wanted. We can't blame Moyes. He played the team everyone wanted. But he can't get a fucking tune out of this team. That is the problem. That is look, the look, set up for this team, the tactics. It was the most boring playing. game of football I've ever seen. It was absolutely horrific to watch. Lawless, I've got, I've, got, I've got a question. I've got a question. When you, obviously, striker, right? You've got Michael Antonio, you've got Ings, yeah? When you sold Gamaka, why did you not bring a striker in? What, what was the reason behind him not signing a striker? Well, we sold Gamaka, didn't we, in the January, and we got Ings in the same <laughs> transfer window. So, I think, did we, did we let him go in, in January, Gamaka? Was it loan to buy, I think, was it? It was. It's, it's all a blur. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is, you lost Skamaka and then you bought in Ings, but then you've only got two strikers that are very average. Like, no, no, no. Mas Antonio said he'd score thirty goals at City, bro. He's a sick player. <laughs> and he said that. He, and he said that. He, he did, did say that. that. He did say that. Liverpool this season. Am I still a disgrace for putting West Ham temp, Lawless? Yeah, 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 yeah. You are. I'm not changing that. I'm not changing. Listen, it's early doors still. We still got. We still got 28 games, right? Wow. So I'm not. Let's not let's not go mad, yeah. Let's not let's not you know bury us yet, okay? 
we got Brentford. That's going to tell us something. But Antonio, yeah, like, listen, I love Antonio. I love the guy. But you're talking a lot and you're not walking a lot. You're not delivering, my friend, because I see performance after performance, the man ghosting. And the big problem with Antonio is he, the way he plays, it's not conducive to his age, to aging. It doesn't, doesn't lend itself to being an older gentleman when you are a pace and power merchant. Because that those are some of the first things to go as you get older. And the guy, I mean, he, you ask him to hold the ball up, he can barely hold himself up, right? The guy falls over <laughs> all the time. It is ridiculous. And, and that is not what you need. And David Moyes, I have to say, the Ings thing pisses me off. Because we I have a young... You, bro, you were short. I told you you needed a striker. You said, no, we've got Obama, whatever his name is. Mubama. Mubama. Put his some name respect is. on his name. And this Obama. is the thing about Mubama. He's very... <laughs> he, listen, he's Obama. an exciting Who? young prospect. <laughs> <laughs> Mubama what? <laughs> Mubama blood <laughs> like young. <laughs> Divine Mubama. Remember the name. Because he won't be at West Ham next season. Because he's not he signing trips, a new contract. He's not signing a new contract because guess what? Moyes, who stopped him going out on loan because he said, you're in my plans, won't play him over Danny Ings, who hasn't scored a single goal in 11 appearances this season. The man doesn't have a single goal in 11 appearances, but constantly starts in Europe and gets brought off the bench to do nothing. How can you watch this man? That with Harrison Aspie. That's the same with Harrison Aspie. Exactly the same. You go in there and make it about you, Pete. You do that, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned from the best. I've learned from the best. I'm not going to lie. Um, about um, Harrison Ashby. Don't bring that name up to me. But I'm just saying, you can't... I can't even blame Ings because the style don't suit him. But it doesn't matter. If you know and you're going to keep asking him to play a lone striker role and he can't do it, Why? Why do you keep doing it? Why are you bashing your head against? Lawless, the I think you're moaning too much, man. Like you, you said, you said to Dan before, this is Man United. You know, West Ham are ninth. This is just not like kind of what you expect from West Ham. Like good couple of results, do all right, but you are going to drop a couple of stinkers. I mean, last Thanks. five matches, you, you, you know, you, you got beat off Liverpool. You beat Sheffield United. You drew to Newcastle. You lost to you lost to Villa. And you lost to West Ham. So you pretty much done exactly what you thought you thought you would do. You picked up a point against Newcastle. No one thought you'd do that. You lost against Everton. That's West Ham for me. Like you'll get a couple of results that no one expected, like a two-two versus Newcastle. Well then you'll go and drop a stinker against Everton. No, you've got to look at the bigger picture, LB. You've got to look at the bigger picture, LB, right? So I sacrifice my entertainment on the weekend, right? I sacrifice <laughs> my entertainment. Oh, I'm not entertained. When I'm watching this team, what's your, so what I, what's your entertainment, Lawless? I, de I dread to think. What's your, what's your, well, my entertainment of being entertained watching a game of football? I'm sacrificing that week in, week out by watching this style of football. You, you got and to watch Aston Villa last week, mate. I wouldn't speak too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you weren't moaning when you won the trophy last yes, year, was you? Oh, 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 we're going to dine on that, are we? We're going to dine on that. Listen, well, don't sure, rest club, if you want, if you want to forget about oh, you winning the European God. trophy, then I'm pretty sure everyone on the panel is quite happy to forget about it. I'm just thrown out there. You, you, had, you, had, you had your main boy playing as well, Lawless, because Kudus played, didn't he? He started. And, and Kudus was the only bright and spot. Paqueta. Yeah, Paqueta, who's now banned for the Brentford game because he picked up a yellow. Kudus was good, but we're going to waste him. We're going to waste... Potentially Paqueta's last season with us if Man City go and, you know, get go to their money bags. And we're going to potentially waste time that Kudas had with us because he's a special player. And we're wasting them because we do not know how to play with the football. Do that well, is the problem. Look, the one LB game, makes, man. LB makes a good lost point. your head. You, you no, know, like, yeah, I would have lost it too if I'd have lost it Everton last week. But LB makes a good point, though. It's like, I think... And, and that's it, like, we're a little brotherly community, yeah. The reality is, your little bro, we, we've been trying to tell you for months, your little bro, <laughs> and all you've been trying to tell us is, no, I'm a big boy, no, nah, I'm a big boy, I'm a mix up with the big boys. And your little bro, is, the sooner you accept that your little bro, everybody's life runs so much smoother, and that's all it is. We like you. Do you get me? We don't mind having a West Ham representative, 
Just play just yourself. Play, like, it's one of them, like, you, you've got to just play your role sometimes in the in this. You know what, yeah? You well, lot all need to slow down. You need to slow down because, listen, let me tell you something. I may be, I may have a toe in the mud right now, yeah? I may have a toe in the mud, right? I may be having short-term pain right now, but guess what? It's going to be my long-term gain because there's a man that you none of you have considered. His name is Big Tim Stytan, and he's already planning for Moise's replacement. I'm telling you, he is out there. This man discovered Javi Alonso. He took him from the obscurity of the second division, Germany, and put him on the pedestal to be considered for Real Madrid, right? This man is going to be finding Moise's replacement. So, yeah, this season, we may have to have a bit of apathy this season. We may be in the mud, but guess what? Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, next season we'll be back. And let's not forget, you want to you wanna bury us now. Yeah, you want to count us out. We had a shit season last season, but guess what we ended with? A trophy. So, listen, I may yes. suffer week to week. Do you know but what? I, you know I love what? the fact that your you know ten what? game review ended with, but next season we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a great I'm not, Lawless, I'm Lawless, I want to know when you say you'll be back, back where? Back listen, the back in Europe, the big time. Back yeah, back listen, in. You listen. said you're gonna listen. you said you're gonna you said to me you you just said to everyone actually. You're gonna rise like a phoenix. So yeah. let's see if we can get someone who can rise oh, like a phoenix. Look at this broad, 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 broad. Take a glass off. Put your hoodie down. Let me talk to you properly, man. Let me talk to you. <laughs> take, no, no, no. You are the dude. No, no. Shut up. You're the dude fraud. That's what you are. You are. He can't take the glasses off. You can't take them off. Only last week. Only last week. This guy was on here. Oh no! You don't know what we're capable. Over. Look at you! Look at the state of you! Look at the state of you right now! It seems like you're at, you're at a funeral. What's happened? What's up? It only only took one game. It only took one game for you to put the shades on, put your hoodie on, and be absolutely disgraceful here. We're up in a, next year. We'll be back. Hold up! Next year you'll be back. Next year now. So your ten ten game review is: We'll be back next year. No, you won't, because you need to know your role. You are not that team. Are you finally realizing that you are not that team? Like you are not lawless. You are deluded. That's what you are, but you're not that team. You think West Ham are this top team. Oh, we're gonna be five, four, fifth. Why are you crying about David Moyes now? What did I even say last week? What did I say last week? I said that he's going to cry about David Moyes. I said it, and here he is right now. You crying said I'd about be Moyes. Moyes you said I'd be Moyes game. That's what you one said. Game, one game, one game. You know what that shows you? You had no faith. You had no faith. All you do is talk with no faith. You're on here rambling on about West Ham with this, with that. With, oh, yeah, we'll be back next week. You're not. This is the real you. Every week, come on here with shades and your hoodie up and be absolutely disgraceful for all the comments that you've been making about West Ham all this time. Because you are West Ham United. You are not Arsenal. You are not City. You are not Liverpool, Spurs, or all them other big clubs. You are a club in London that's got more success than the likes of Palace, but you're closer to Palace than, than you are to the other clubs. That's the harsh reality to all this. Under David right. Moyes. So if you don't realise this now, you're going to be on here with way more episodes, putting on your shades, because you're just a fraud. Honestly, you're the biggest fraud I know. You're the biggest fraud. All, all you do is hype up with Sam, hype up with Sam. You don't believe in the hype. How can one loss, one loss get you this devastated? Because you're lying to yourself. You're not lying to me. You're lying to yourself. You know that West Ham is not that team. But you think they are. If you thought that they were that team, one loss wouldn't have you like this. But this is the reality. This is the reality of the situation. Imagine you know cool. what, yeah? Imagine Joey, yeah cool. somehow, you're a trespasser. <laughs> you're a trespasser. This is race for Europe. Hold you on, have on, never on, seen on, your on, team play you? a second no, no, no. in be Europe. Quiet, be quiet. You've this never seen Europe. it. This is a race for Europe. This is a race for Europe. And I'm taking you down. You're coming with me. It's, I'm, 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 it's, 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 it's time to go home. It's time to go home. Fun is over, Lawless. It's time to go home. Take your shades off. Put your hoodie down. And let's go. Come. We're top of the table. Come. We are Let's top go. of the table. We it's time to go. Fun time is over, Lawless. It's time. It's time. Let's go. Come. I've got a door open. We're in Europe, mate. We're in Europe. 
Yeah, but then you're not. But okay, all right, cool. Take your shades off. I want to see your eyes. And look to me in Listen, my eyes and you say, can "Look at me in the eyes. eyes. We are." All right. <laughs> In what Europe. are you going to do in Europe? What are you going to do in Europe this year? What are you going to do in Europe? We are the reigning European champions of the Conference League, yeah? <laughs> do not tell me. Out of everyone here, I, I, my team is the only team, well, and, and LBs, with current European trophies, yeah? Current, You're the European not champions. Expired. You're the Conference League champions. European champions is yeah. uh, LBs are European champions. They won the Champions League, the highest yeah, We are one of European the European competition out there. You are we the are equivalent one. of Papa John Trophy of European champions. You're not the <laughs> European champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you are. That's what yeah, yeah. European champions are the Champions yeah, League winners. Yeah. European champions yeah, yeah. are not the Champions League winners. You won a European competition, but you're not the European champions. Win the Champions League, then you'll be the European champions. You just won a European trophy. You How dare the someone that has been dining on their own feet and complaining about Papa that John? Nonsense. You would sell your right arm to eat some Papa John's. Don't you ever say I would. I'm not lying. I'm not delusional as you are. But I also want to come on here and talk about European champions because you're not the European champions. You haven't won the Champions League. And also, hold up. So you're going to win the European League this year? Listen, I'm uh, at the top of the table right now. We had a shit season last season and won a European trophy. So don't count us out. Your argument is basically waffle and nonsense. You had a bad season. Yeah. D, I got to go, mate, but can I just tell you something? My wedding day's here. The last five minutes, <laughs> up, up and away. Thank you, my brother. Good night, all. Okay, Thank you very much. Man, Thank you. Nice stand. Take it easy, mate. Uh, you, was getting on to me last, you was getting on to me last week, and you was talking about how, oh, you base your thing, you base everything on other clubs, you base it on nothing. So you explain, do, your, do. your theory nothing is, last year we had a bad season, you're already saying that you're going to have a bad season, which is funny because last week you wasn't hyping up like this. So you was clearly lying to me last week. And now all of a sudden, because you've had a bad season last year, I won the conference league. You're going to have another bad season when the Europa League based on, based on what? Based on based what? Based on past based evidence. On, based hold on, up, hold up. Is, it, is Europa League not harder than the Europa Conference League? Yeah, it is. Okay, but we've got better players. That it works. Maybe more. You delusional. Let, this is the thing. You this is working. the same wavelength. Do you, do you let let, let me tell you league? something. You think you're going to be in Europa League and you're going to win it because you've done it the same last year. Last year was fine. Really in your league. ears back. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, listen to me, D. Listen, I'll tell you why. I'm going to tell you something. I think, this is why I say this. Because I think we are a better cup side. I think under Moyes, the way Moises has playing is more conducive to cup football. That's why I think we did well last season. No, 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 no. Let me stop you there. I'm sorry to cut you off. Part. But you done well because you spent 200 million pounds for the Europa Conference League and you won it. Not because David Moyes is a magical cup, all of a sudden cup winning manager. They, like, let's not talk any nonsense. You spent 200 million pounds last year. You was on here talking rubbish to Pete about how much money they spent. You spent, man, I think, yeah, you spent more than them just to win the Conference League. That's the reality of it. Not because David Moyes. Because David Moyes, hold up. David Moyes was in the Europa League the year before. You didn't win the Europa League. So what what was that about? Sorry, right. I'm not being funny yeah. but if, if Pete saw his team win a Conference League, that'd be more than two generations of his family has ever seen Newcastle win. So okay, let's but, not. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, but no, no. Okay, cool. Newcastle, they're not. In a, right. They're not in the conference league. They're in the. If they were, let's. Say, I'm not saying Newcastle win it, but if they were to win it, Pete can come and say we are the European champions because that's what European champions are. Champions okay, league. We're one of. We're a European champion. Well, we're up. a. We're well, a. Hold up. Yes. So you was, you was in the Europa League before, Lawless. You didn't win it. We got to the semi final. Okay, so this time around, when Liverpool's in it, and you know, there's going to be other teams that's going to be more dangerous than West Ham. You really think? I'm tired of your nonsense because you're going to flip-flop. This is what I said all along. You're not true to yourself. You're not lying to me. I don't believe in your lies. I just think you just, you just lie to yourself. I don't know why you do this, but you just lie you're to yourself. You're the same guy who said Hodgson stinks, yeah? You was accusing him on Twitter of Hodgson said, oh, he stinks because he, he weren't rating the young players, yeah? And you're sitting here trying to stick your chest out to me. What Talk did I say about Hodgson? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, right, right, in right. your voice. What did I say about Hodgson? What's that, what did I say about Hodgson? About he said he stinks. Um, I, huh? You said he stinks or something like that. So, so okay. So what's your point? Did I have I been backing Hodgson? Yeah, you well? have. Yeah, you have. 
You yeah, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's done. Well, he's done well with a limited squad, and I still believe that. I'm not here talking. I'm not. Right, I'm stinks. not like you. You're deluded. That's what you are. You're deluded. You need I'm some links, like Africa. Is that you, it? you, yeah. Last week you're like, no, we're fine with Moyes, you know. And then this week you seem like you're you're at a funeral. I don't. I don't understand it. Like, how do you change from in seven in space of seven days from that to this? Because you don't believe in your own source. But what I said about Hodgson, it stinks because of his uh, comments about younger players. I still think he's done a very good job in terms of the limited squad that he's had. But I think that comment stinks. Okay, we, listen, we don't talk about the relevant teams on this show, okay? We talk about European teams. Yeah. You know, the you only know reason it. West Ham are relevant, no, Lawless... Tune into you tomorrow, you. Mate. The, the, the only reason West Ham are relevant, Lawless, is because of you. And it's not a good thing. Because you're relevant you won a European for being, trophy, mate. You're That's relevant right. for, being, for, for being a delusional West Ham fan. That's what Trying that's what is. That's what that West Ham are. That's what West Ham are. You always put West Ham into these conversations, but you what? shouldn't be in these conversations. What you're what? not going to win the Europa League this year. Put your put your put, put your glasses down and tell me. Look, look me in my eyes. In my eyes right now. Are you going to win the Europa League? <laughs> This year, no, stop no. putting me in these absolutes, right? No, 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 I don't, I'm no, not no, like, no, no, Let's see the real dog. Let's see the real dog. Let's see the real dog. Let's see what like, Lord, tell me. Are you going to win the you are you going to win the Europa League? No, I can't no. answer that question, can I? Because I don't know the, the draw, and there's you know many oh, things. Oh, that's last year, the reality is, what's happened after 10 games now? Realistically, talk to us on a, on a real level. Where do you expect West Ham to finish this season? That's what we actually want to know. Now we've seen it. Now the dust has settled. Now all the emotions are out of it and all the hype's died seventh. down. He's going to say seventh. No, well, don't just say seventh for the sake. Don't just die on a hill. Be, be a realist. Listen, let me tell you something. And the Europa League Errol. as well. Where do you think you're going to finish in the Europa League? Errol, I'm not a Liverpool fan. I, I deal in if, buts and maybes. I don't deal in absolutes, right? <laughs> and I'm going to say this. I there's We still can finish seventh. We still can. So can Luton, by but... the way. I should have United. You're right. <laughs> what would you say? My point is, yeah, they can still finish seventh. They can, yeah. I'm just saying. You can make Paris to Sheffield United, yeah? No, no, no. I'm just saying. Uh, maybe you're basing on that because you're just talking absolute nonsense. You're not going to finish seventh. We have seventh. a table run of fixtures no, coming oh, hold up. up. Yeah. Talk, well, hold up. You're talking about 10-game review. So the 10-game review is here. I don't want we yeah. can. Are you? Do you think, based on these 10 games, will you finish seventh? Not cans or That's buttons. a preview. You You're asking for a preview, not a review. You always talk big. So I want you to talk big like you've been talking big all this time. <laughs> previews what past tense. Re right? Reviews past tense. Previews future tense. What do you want out of me? A preview or a review? Which one no, is no. it? So based on the review, I want a preview. Because you was <laughs> even on about the preview. <laughs> That's what I want. You're talking about 10 games. So the 10 games is here. So based on this review, I want to preview you because you've been raving on about these 10 games. So are you going to finish in the top seven? Because last week you we, Our nose is bloody right now, yeah? Okay? I will say that, yeah? We're, 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 we're bruised and we're hurt. And we know, we stand, yeah, on the precipice here where we can either... <laughs> Go back into relegation oblivion, or we can scratch and claw and fight our way back up the table with our winnable games we've got coming up, right? Brentford is everything. It is everything. If we win that game, if we beat Brentford away, that's just a that's just a blip. That's just a blip. Right? Will, will, will you, will you beat Brentford away? It's not looking good, Brent. Stop looking. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that. And, and this is what I mean. like, you don't really believe me in your score. That's what I'm saying. Even if you I believe away, in I'm not going to say where Sam will finish seventh because I still don't think that you're you're not. I, I just don't think you're that side. It doesn't matter about Brentford. It doesn't even matter about Everton. If he was really a top seven side or really had contentions, sides can slip up along the way. We've seen it even with the the top class size like Arsenal and cities like Liverpool do you will have that one or two results you think oh what's going on there like but if you actually believe in that your team could finish in the top half or top seven top six one defeat wouldn't change everything that's why I think you're fraud because one defeat has got you with the shades on with the hoodie on and all this time you're saying top seven top seven top seven so why are you so worried because I don't think you actually believe it you say it for the sake of saying it but you don't really believe it deep down. I don't think Villa and Brighton are going to run away with it. And i tell you why. They're looking very well bright. Uh, you Villa even right. said Villa, Brighton. Brighton. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you. You're shaky right now. But no, what? this is why. This is what I'm saying to you, right? I think we can afford 
some slip ups because it, I think Villa's time will come when they have that shaky period as they go deeper in Europe. Obviously, they're they're new to being back into Europe. It's been a long time. Billy's never seen them really do Europe like that. Um, so they've got that to contend with. Brighton are already struggling, right? So when if they get if if they get deeper into Europe, then they're gonna gonna have to really, you know, have Deserby tinker tankering all over the time, not knowing what team to play, forgetting the team he played in oh, Europe. Shut up, man. You're just making nonsense. This is your problem. I'm just you saying they're gonna nonsense. struggle. Just we will. Why are you making up theories? We're not doing flipping theories here. It's not theory class. You're asking you're my opinion. About, realistically, you're making up. Oh, yeah. Deserby will do this, and he'll do... no. Let's wait and see what happens. Just okay. Well, let's wait and see then. Wait Stop and making see. Theories up. What theories are you making up? What's wrong with you? We will. You're making up theories about Brighton and Villa. Oh, Brighton will do this and that. Let's just see what Brighton do. Let's see what. Well, let's Villa just do. see what West Ham do then. You know what? Dude, you're not doing the niche. That's the whole point. You're not going to do niche. If you believe that you was going to do something, you wouldn't be on here with the shades on. You'd I say what we're going to do. Me. But you can't look and this is, the I eyes. see what we're going to do. I'm going to say this. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to say this. Right. Because I'm, I'm going to say, this, but this means a lot to you, and I know that because you bring it up. We're going to finish above Crystal Palace. That's what we're going to do. Because, you as said, you said, finishing above West Ham is a big deal for you, right? No, it's, we're not big take deal for me. it's not a big deal for me. Because we finished above West Ham last year, and I didn't say much about it until recently. Yeah. Because, uh, until recently, until recently... <laughs> I didn't say much about it. Oh, we done the double it. over West Ham. We done the double. Yeah. We won okay. the double. Can I land? Can I land? I didn't say anything about it until recently because you kept saying, oh, why don't you talk about your own club? Because Landed me, in the Thames, about West Ham is not a massive thing. Um, it's, 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 you know, it's one of those things that you can finish above us, we can finish above you. It's not like a major thing. But we smoked you twice last year. We finished above you. And you still came out here saying, oh, we still had a better season. We've done this. With and I said, fair enough. But that's the whole purpose of this lawless you might finish above us we might finish above you but that, that'll be the conversation it won't be you finishing above arsenal liverpool or all them other teams it'll be you finishing above palace that's the main purpose of this of this whole talk well, there is you know for those that didn't see it there's there's a bet that d and lawless have got so let's see who's wearing that shirt at the end of the season and we're and eating a hot chili man because whoever finishes above who listen you can't even find <laughs> places to buy palace shirts they're that as much of a crap club you know what <laughs> well, I mean? how many club shops have you got how many clubs have we got? Fucking hell, we, we've gone to the pits of yeah. hell. We're we're about club shop. Shop now. <laughs> I just don't know where I'm gonna get one of these. I might that's what I mean. I'm gonna have to buy a Barcelona well, shirt. Well, how many like... clubs have you got? <laughs> have you only got one? Have you only got one at your stadium? Have you got any other club shops what? anywhere else? Boy, yeah, we do. Where? We have them all on. We've got we've got a club shop in Lakeside, we've got club shop in Romford. Um an official one. Crap. Stratford, yeah, they're official ones, yeah. Okay, that's, cool. it's just anyway, that's that, that's, I don't we care got, about club shops. Well. I, I'm no, moving I, this listen, I don't care about club this shops. Is, you know what the thing about me? I, I'm a victim here because I poor, <laughs> poor not, me never not. gets to actually, you know, you 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 assume my thoughts because I don't get to finish a thought, right? <laughs> Everyone jumps on me before I get I, so people Why do you, you, think you that? build up a narrative of who I am and what I say. Because you don't hear the full story. It don't come full circle. That's the problem. So you've built this, this villain in your head that isn't there. So I'm just going to say that. You're, well, listen, you're actually, you're actually, we'll keep, we'll keep, you're we'll keep it there, man, because uh, Maz ain't got long before he's got to shoot off. And uh, I wanted to do Villa and Brighton together because I feel like they're, they're two clubs that people are looking at for the right reasons. And Brighton have you started are, you to are. drop off a couple of times. Listen, yeah. I've, I, I, what is this with you in obsession with Aston Villa and Brighton? Newcastle, I'm I guess. Jealous. Jealous. You're looking jealous. at them a bit too much. It's becoming pervy now, the way you're looking at them. He's jealous. Oh, my God, man. It's <laughs> unbelievable, isn't it? This guy is just absolutely unreal. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> nobody feels sorry for you anymore, mate. Let me tell you that. Nobody is feeling sorry for you today. That is for sure. Uh, Maz and Billy, let me ask you both, man, because you're both going for similar things. You're both in Europe. You're both going for a similar position in the league. Who's going to finish above who? Because I thought Brighton were playing better than Villa. Now it looks like it's switching again now. Villa are playing better than Brighton. Brighton sort of not really taking Europe by storm. Obviously, Villa in the, the Conference League. So I suppose you can't compare that quite in the same light to the Europa League. But I still fancy them to do well. Maz, we'll start with you, bro. Are yeah. you looking at Villa thinking in trouble? Or are you kind of expecting to be there or thereabouts still, bro? 
no, I said earlier, fair play to Villa. They're, they're killing it at the moment. Uh, they're just in a much better... I think, it can't, to me, it comes down to purely De Zerbi at the moment. He's doing too much rotation, too much tinkering. We've got no spine to the team. Like, there's just too much changes. I saw a stat as well. Um, most Premier League goals conceded this season. We're behind Luton, Bournemouth and Burnley and Sheffield United in goals conceded. Um, uh, errors were top of the top of the league uh, for errors playing that from the back. So it just shows like, yeah, we're just defensively, we're a shambles at the moment. And I think it comes down to playing this different lineup pretty much every game. I think there's five, six changes every game. And it's like, how are you meant to have any kind of consistency, any kind of, you know, continuity uh, or form with, with too much tinkering? So yeah, at the moment it's not looking good, but I think if we can get a bit of consistency, a bit more, you know, the lineup being the same, deserving not, not messing around every game, I think we can kick on and I think um, we will finish strong, hopefully, this season. I think once we start to maybe go out of a few competitions, we'll start start looking better and a bit more stronger. But um, yeah, yeah, it's just Villa are, at the moment, if you had to pick, Villa will, will definitely finish above us right now. But that's not to say, come the end of the season, that we won't finish above them. What are you saying, Billy? Brighton or Villa? Who's gonna who's gonna finish higher? Because you, yeah, listen, you brushed Luton aside. I expected you to. Thought you played really well. It's good to watch again. But for me, I think I can't pick between these two, man. I think both sides are looking great, man. I can't lie across the season. Yeah, um, two two good teams. I mean, if you you're asking me that question now, I've I've got no option but to say Villa with the way that we're playing, the form that we're in. <clears throat> Pardon me, sorry. The the home form that we're in, especially, is is just phenomenal. Um, so so yeah, just purely to give you an answer now, I ha- I have to say Aston Villa, like Mad says, as as things progress, maybe maybe Brighton drop out of the Europa League or or the other cup competitions, and Villa is still in them. Things things may change as the season goes on, but if you're asking me now, I, I have to say Villa because. Mm. What Mazzy's complaining about with De Zerbi constantly changing five, six changes is the complete opposite to Villa, to be honest with you, particularly in the league. We've got such a strong spine to that team. We know what the lineup's going to be every single week. You know, We know what changes are going to be made and when they're going to be made pretty much every single week with the substitutions. You know, With Europe, we know that uh, Tielemans is going to come in. There's going to be a couple of changes here and there. You know, but we're all it, it's such a strong spine no matter what. The the only massive difference is when Emmy Martinez isn't playing and we've got Robin Olsen that comes in. Um just quickly on that, by the way, Emmy Martinez winning the uh, Yashin trophy, best goalkeeper in the world playing for Aston Villa, voted for by FIFA's best and and uh the, the Ballon d'Or as well. So have Look, some shame, Billy. Have some shame, that's, mate. That stinks, that, <laughs> Bill. That stinks. And that's not he's, a, he's, he's, got, he's got the trophies it's not, for it. It's, he's it's got not the a slight on him. That just stinks. Yeah, the geese is the worst geese he, ever. He, he's, he's, got, he's got the trophies for it. Anyway, anyway, back you to the That's why you bought that Argentina shirt, Billy. It, it's in honor of uh, Lionel Messi winning his when is it winning his eighth, eighth Ballon d'Or yeah. and and Emmy Martinez. Martinez just behind me there. If you can see it, <laughs> um, has it been announced now? Has it been announced now? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know whether the, the Ballon d'Or Martinez has, has, but but yeah. Martinez it's has. Gonna yeah. messy, it? It's going to be messy, is it? It's going to be messy. Yeah, Harlan yeah. Robs, man. Harlan Robs. That's Rob, what man. everyone's saying. Yeah. Fabrizio's just tweeted Holland about Messi won. winning his eighth. Fabrizio's tweeted about it, so if he has, it's pretty. No, I, 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 Harlan. A week ago, that Messi was going to win it, so everyone everyone knows yeah. it's a formality. You know what I mean? It's... But the Beckhams there and all the rest of it, they know what's happening. Like they wouldn't have travelled otherwise. Hey, Alvarez has completed football, man. He could have. He could have been up for it. World Cup on a treble. <laughs> wow. Um, now nah, listen. By the way, um... Maz, don't you dare lose to Everton next weekend. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't worry, bro. We're not, we're not. We're not the same. We're not the same, bro. <laughs> By the way, what's he still doing it? Like, what's he still doing it? Like, yeah. we, you know, uh, we're right. at his little moment. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah, I'm gonna like, go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. This road. I'm gonna go. But next time, <laughs> yeah, get out. Of next here. time, I, I have to say one thing. I have to say one thing. Next time, <laughs> just, just you know, actually mean what you say because right now you don't mean what you say because last week you was raving on. This week you're going to a funeral. Just make it make sense. 
You don't you don't believe what you say. And even if you beat Brentford, nothing's gonna change. You still got David Moyes as a manager, you're still West Ham, and you're still no one asking him on the will be a good season. Remember that you're just a small club in East London. <laughs> Big up D man. Big up D latest, yeah, bro. Here we go. It's the European show again. Oh here we go. <laughs> Maz, I know you gotta go, bro. Yeah, Thanks, man. Show. Love, Boys. man. Love. Take it easy, man. Really enjoyed it. Take it easy, man. Good speech again, mate. Always a, always a pleasure, bro. Uh, let's quickly talk, uh, to wrap things up, let's quickly talk about, uh, I want to talk about Arsenal and Liverpool uh, and where Little B's head's at there, uh, going into what we think will, at the moment, looks to be a close three-way thing. Don't know how long that'll be going for, but at the moment it is that. But drop points for Newcastle, Pete. Is this injuries or was this a bad day at the office? Is there any excuses? Was it a deserved result for you? Talk to me, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. I thought I was, I cannot wait um, for this one. Oh, I can't wait for this yeah, one. You know, you know what? Um, thinking about it since the res- since the result, I, you know, beforehand, I, I, I would have I would have taken a point with the injuries that, that we picked oh, up. Oh, it's, it's, it's not an excuse. Fit, it's, not, bro. it's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. But, but actually, in the game, we were two one up, so I wanted the win. And I'm and I'm and I'm disappointed that we didn't get the win. Um, it was a poor second goal to concede. To be fair, both goals were really poor. Some of our better players in the team didn't play well. As to Trippier didn't have a great game. Um, Callum Wilson, although he scored two goals um, in the game, wasn't wasn't great. Um, and, and it just it just didn't click. It didn't come together. Some of the players looked really tired. Um, and yeah. Uh, I thought equally, and I put it in the chat after the game. I said, "Fair play to Wolves, like because uh, that O'Neill's O'Neill's build, building a decent side there. They're full of action, full They've of running, me, man. great energy. Huang looks a really talented player. Neto was outstanding, <laughs> really, really top top player. At Neto and it, and you know, obviously, it, it, even for an opposition uh, fan watching that game, like I was gutted that he got that injury because he looked lightning." He would look really, really good. But um, I take the point. Um, it's, not, it's not the worst point in the world. We got a point there last season. Uh, we could have had three though, and that's that's the thing because we're coming into a, 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 a massive, a massive game, a ma- massive game this weekend when we um, when we play Arsenal. So but that's um, a terrible point, man. Come on. Ter- oh, so, so the one that got beat there. Come yeah, on. that was a terrible loss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what I'm saying is, on the back of that, on the back of that, it's not the worst. It's not the worst point it in the world. I want, I wanted three points. I said we'd win two one. I wanted three points at two one. We were comfortable. It was a poor goal to concede off the back of it, and um, to to make it two two. There was a lot of mistakes in that. I wanted three points. Of course I did. So, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be banging around being disappointed about it. It was exactly the same with West Ham. We were two one up at West Ham. We conceded a last minute goal. I could beat myself up about it, but I'm not because we still took points. We're still we're still unbeaten in what seven, eight games in the Premier League. Six, we're still you're six adrift to Liverpool now. You're six adrift to Liverpool. Yeah. So what? Uh, and you've got you've got Go who have you got coming up? You've got Arsenal coming up, you've got Chelsea, United, Spurs. Hold on, we yeah, we we have got Arsenal at home, then Bournemouth away, then we have the international break, and then we've got um after that, I think we've got Chelsea at home, um, Man United at home. Off the back of that, so they're games that we can win, and when we get players yeah, back, you, we build yeah, the squad, but, but, we go again. You should have beat West Ham. You should have beat Wolves. I never, like should have. I never should have. I never should have. You can't. You can't win every game. You can't win every game. Last well, season, last I'm season, last season, we drew nil nil at home to Palace. Last season, we we drew one one at, uh, at home to Bournemouth. We drew what was it? One one away at Bournemouth. We drew nil nil away at Palace. Like they're all games that I was gutted about. But we still finished fourth. Yeah, but it's the, not the end of the world. Last year. The league there was still, last there year. Still other, there are still other games. There are still other, other games that we can pick up points in moving forward. Why, why are we ignoring the elephant in the room? Why are we doing that? And I'm disappointed in you, Pete. I'm really disappointed in you. I, I, I wait patiently through that whole review and I waited you to hear talk about one thing. Well, you sat there and went, well, we're 2 1 up. We should have won this. We should have won that. You should have lost that game. You should have lost that game. You deserve to lose that game. You're going to sit here. You are going to sit here and to all of our faces try and say that that was a penalty. Are you going to do that, Pete? What? Go on. Are you going to tell us that you should have got a penalty? It was a penalty. You should have given us a penalty. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. 
So the, all decisions are right. All decisions are right, Pete. I'm not gonna. I'm not Is gonna complain. I'm not gonna play. Is that what you're telling me, Pete? Okay. Okay. But okay. Tell me about I'm not, decision. I'm, Lawless, I'm telling you, I'm not going to complain. We got the penalty. So it was wrong then. The decision was wrong. How have you got that from what I've just said? I'm asking you. you well, tell me. Listen. You tell me. Was it a penalty? Yes or no? I'm saying to you, we were given. It was given as a penalty. But should it have? Well, why? Why? Why shouldn't it have been given a penalty? I tell you why. Because it was a dive. That's why. That's there why. Was, there was contact made. Yeah, by your player who initiated that contact. What? Our player won the ball. Juan so was Pete, nowhere near the ball. He took so, a swing so, at the ball and missed. And his knee so, made contact with his calf. What 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 have you not seen in, in that whole in that whole situation that makes even you your fans are saying no penalty. Wasn't a penalty? Even your fans are saying no penalty. Wait, all right, let's go around the panel. And, that's, and that's an opinion. And that's an opinion. And and the same Newcastle fans that are in the chat. Said exactly the same on our review, and I still said it was a penalty, and I stick by that. There was contact yeah, media. And- because you know what? Your politician, Pete, you spin every Newcastle yarn <laughs> the way you want to spin it. Because when you robbed us at Argaff, right, and you got them dodgy decisions, you wanted to sweep I, them we, under we the robbed you. Like We robbed you. You got a lucky last minute goal. We had you. Lucky? Beat. Lucky? It was a banger. It was a banger of a goal. Yeah, a lucky last-minute goal. A lucky last-minute goal. If it wasn't for that, we'd have beat you. We should have beat you, okay? No, but you should have, that, because that, guess what? You that, should have had nine men on the pitch. Nine. You should have had nine oh, men uh, on uh, the pitch. Because apparently, apparently Almiron should have got sent should have got sent off with one yellow card. Descent. Apparently. Yeah, descent. Everyone no, round the panel. You gave the, you gave the excuse that he, had, that he should have got a second yellow card when he wasn't even booked at the time. So you didn't even know the time. Okay, so he should have got a first, and then he would have got a second. So no, he should have got two have got yellow cards in the game. Wouldn't but let's digress. What we're talking about is the one yellow card. So Wolverhampton deserves to win that game. Everyone, everyone, I want to go from Potts to LB. I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was a penalty personally. I thought it was there particularly harsh. But Errol, yeah. you agree, disagreeing? No, I, no, I agree with you. I don't think. I don't think it was a pen. I think he's, he's very, very. Unlucky in that situation to concede the penalty yeah. there. To be honest with you, it's not like for me he's gone to clear the ball. He's not gone in. He's not like he's missed the tackle late or something like that. You know when it's something it's like genuinely malicious tackles. You think oh he's late there. He's like literally kicked the ball. Now I know there's contact, so the referee's going to look at it. And with all the pressure nowadays, of course you're going to sit there. But I thought it was a real incredibly harsh. I'll be livid if that was me kicking the ball away and they're giving a penalty for that. But I don't know what you guys think. Like lawless me and Errol, they'll be Billy. I, I can't remember seeing it, to be honest with you. I don't oh, think I've seen it back. So I can't remember seeing it. No, I don't. If you want to be right, just say it. I think it's harsh. You don't think it's yeah, a penalty, Obi? No. 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 no, no, no. I think it's harsh. Wolves deserve to win that but, game. But, but that, that, and, that's the, and that's the point, is that it can be still harsh. You know, Shaw, Shaw's already... If that was given against you, Pete, we'd be hearing a different story right now. We'd be hearing a very different... I'd, I'd, be, I'd be saying exactly what LB what Pops, what Errol have been saying, is that it's a harsh penalty. And it is. It is a harsh penalty. I'm not going to lie about that. But, as Pops has already said, there was contact made. He's gone to swing for the ball. Shaw's nicked the ball. And, yes, he right. took a swing and he's made contact. His knees made contact with the back of his leg. You see that because the first thing he holds when he goes down is his calf at the point in which contact is made. Contact is made so they couldn't overturn it. They couldn't overturn it's it. It's a knife. They tried to look for it to overturn it, and they couldn't because the referee made the decision that it was a penalty. And they looked and they could see the contact was made. And they said it during the game. They said it during the game. There was contact made. So they couldn't, because the contact was made, they couldn't then overturn the decision. If there was no contact, it would have been overturned. Watching the game, I thought, oh, it might well be overturned because you look and everyone's looking at the foot, and the foot doesn't make contact. But it's the knee afterwards that takes the player down. And so, it, so therefore, it's a penalty. And if it was on the other way around, I'd be coming on here and saying exactly the same. On the opposition side of things, I'd be gutted if it, if it was given to me. But I'd be saying it was a harsh penalty. And it was a harsh penalty. So I'm saying that whether I'm on the side that gets the penalty or the side that isn't. And I stand by that. But you obviously got to be in your bonnet because you got lucky to get a point. 
And uh, how did we get lucky? You North should have had less players on the pitch. And you've been had. for Newcastle ever since that that result. You got lucky. We were the better team. We played better than you. We should have won the game. We didn't. That was probably more You've disappointing than the Wolves right. team because Wolves played better than you. They're better than you. They're probably going to finish higher than you in the Premier League. Right? They are slow a much down. better team than relax. you are. Relax. Take a breath. Slow down, relax. All you want. Two I'm points. To it. I am more disappointed about the fact that we didn't take three points at your place in comparison to Wolves. And that's you mean you wasn't point. given LB, three points LB by the Premier League? Well, that's said, a great. Pete. LB said it's a poor point. point. You got given one point. point. It is a poor point. I'm Pete. more disappointed about the West Ham game than I am the Wolves game because Wolves, Wolves were a good side. They played well. Pete, that's they a poor. It's well. a poor point. You're going for the Champions League. You're trying to get back into the top four. A, 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 a draw at, uh, at Wolves. Yeah. You now six points off Champions Tell League him. spots. That is poor. No, it's not poor at all. It's not so we're six points still, off the top we're still four. Picking up, we're, we're still picking up points. We're still picking up points. It doesn't yeah, matter. Six less, we're... six less than Liverpool. You know what? Six points, that's two games. It could get turned around very, very I, I need to address this philosophy that teams. you have on picking up there points, Pete. Teams still to play, no. LB. Uh, LB, I... I'm talking to you at this moment in time. Um, at this point, there's still a lot of games still left to play. <laughs> Like, yeah, but there's I'm, a lot of games I'm, for Liverpool to play. There's a lot of games for Villa to play. Of course, of course. And I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. You're saying to me it's a poor point. As a Newcastle fan, it I'm telling you... It's a poor point. Um, yeah, to you it might be, but to me it's not. In the grand scheme of things, we still took a point. We're still moving on, okay? We are well within that top seven conversation because we're in no, the... Because I've not, said, I've not said you're and, out of the top four. four. I'm just saying, not. if you're going for top four, right... And you get a point at the morning, you that's a poor point. I'm sorry, I don't think that's a controversial thing to say. No. I never said it was controversial. I'm saying to you, well, you I'm did giving because you, my... you said it wasn't a poor point. You disagree, yeah, because I'm giving you my opinion. I'm not saying that you're controversial because I disagree and I give you a different opinion. I've never said you're controversial. That's your opinion. I'm saying to you, as a Newcastle fan, I don't think it's a poor point, but you're, you're coming back at me like I'm wrong in what I'm saying, but it's my team. I'm telling you from my opinion. That that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that I think it's a decent point. In the grand scheme of things, yeah, we'd have liked three points. I'm good that we didn't get three because we were two one up. We were in the driving seat and we let it slip. It's one of them ones for me, peak it's way. Not, you look, it's not look. the end of the world. You saying it's a poor point makes out that it's a really bad result and that it's gonna be no. the end of the world. No, I get what I get, I get what LB say. I get what LB saying, but I think from from being in that position before in previous seasons, you only realise how much of a bad point it is when all said and done at the end of the season. We've done it before where we've we've drew to, to West Ham and we, we've drew games to, you know, the Brightons of this world and, and Brentford. And you look back and just think, if we would have just got those two extra points, exactly. it might have... And that's, 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 that's my feeling right now. That's so my feeling. With in those the moment, two. you can kind of just dust yourself off and go again. But it's only towards the end of the season when you're starting to top up and you look at those that draw column and you start to think, oh, from a 2-1 lead, if we'd have just seen that over the line, that's when you start to re reassess it. And, and people in the chat people in the chat are, are agreeing with me that they're, they're, they're of the same mindset. Some of them are not Newcastle fans. So I don't think I'm wrong in what I'm saying. And if I'm saying that I'm happy with a point... Uh, and we move forward and we dust ourselves off like some people are saying, I'm cool with that because that's how I feel. I'm not going to do what Lawless goes, ah, 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 it's a worst result in the world and all this business and shades and hoods. I'm not and a politician, Pete. Listen, crap. I don't do the political I'm not gonna game. Do that. No, I'm no, you're not, I'm not you're, not, you're, not, you're not a politician. Not you're, a drama I'm not queen. you're a drama queen. That's what you are. Is that you just re Listen. you overreact. What I'm telling you, I'm trying you know to what? You know what it is, Pete? Football is about thing. emotion. Yeah, emotion. And I am emotional, but I but I don't always show it. Okay. Here, no, because you don't have I'm your politics. Game, I show my I show my emotion in the game and then I reflect and then I think about the game and, and you I think spin, about the and you picture. spin. And therefore, I've had two days to reflect on the bigger picture and the game. And now compared to my reaction on the review show. On loaded mag NFC, where I was disappointed, I now think differently, and that's the difference. You're still head on, glasses on, all this business. I'm not that. I'm not that. 
I think about things differently. I think about things differently than you. Doesn't mean that I'm le any less sure. emotional than you. I am You're probably more emotional than you. Pete, I, I know what. what. I want to finish the top. You just don't yeah. like. You just don't like. The, you just don't like my perspective on football and the way I think about things. That's the. That's why you call me politician, and that's cool. I don't mind. You do, but, at same, but at the same time, I think about things in a different way. And if that's yeah, because the, your you idea know, is, I, as long as you don't lose, things, it's fine. I, the way I think about things. As, but as long as you pick up a point, it's fine. But guess what, Pete? If you pick up a point every single week, you're left with 38 points and you get relegated. So this philosophy of all points matter, all points count, all points are equal. No, Pete, yeah, it's not. Yeah, you can't not just what, put positive on picking up points every week. In the grand scheme of things, Lawless, it's not the worst point in the world. But you yeah, if we go on a run where we, if we go on a run where we're drawing games, of course, I'm going to then be a little bit concerned. Why we're we drawing so many games? What's the issue here? Of course I am, but we're not at that point yet, Lawless. And like you keep telling us about West Ham, there are still lots of games to play. So therefore, why is it okay for you to say that there's lots of games still to play in the Premier League, but it's not okay for me to say it? And why is he saying next to me? That it's the worst thing in the world that we got a point in Wolves. I didn't say, no, 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 okay, I didn't say that. He, what he's I doing, he's I doing the job. I didn't say that. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You bring the gang and up, you get LB to do the rah, 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 and the oh, Lord. No, 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 yeah. not the rah, rah, rah. Someone's got to be because you know what? Errol and Potts. You know, you have kids, like clubs. They don't, they give you an easy ride. And Lawless is behind him, like, yeah, yeah. And you lost that home to Errol. What's that again? What's an Errol do what? What are me and Errol doing? We're still killing, man. What's that? Ride on this channel. You give Pete an easy ride. Me and Errol give Pete an easy ride on this channel. Yeah. How have I got dragged into this one? Yeah. See, you're you're doing that. Do you know what you was doing there, Errol? You're doing that, like you know, that that soft, nicey voice with your kids. Oh, it's okay. You'll get some points next week. All all of that, like. But you want to come and kill the rest of us, yeah? Dan United, me, LB. When he when he dropped points, yeah. I know LB didn't even show up when they lost that, and we had <laughs> you coming on. But still, come on, like you, if if Newcastle, if we really to believe this team are about it, yeah, like Potts says they're about it and they're the real deal. We got to try and have some standards. We got to hold them to some standards. They lost to. I love, to how, he says, I love how he puts words in my mouth. I said Newcastle are the real deal. When have I ever go. said the Newcastle are the real deal? Oh, sorry, go. I'm paraphrasing. I'm there paraphrasing. You right. they need, they need, they need you're trying, you're trying to create your narrative, Lawless. That's what you're doing. <laughs> and you want to do over I'll say this. I'll say, go on, LB, go on, LB. Yeah, I, 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 the only reason I say it's about point, right? Yeah, you. I said before, you're six points behind Liverpool, and you said two games. Well, you've got you've got Arsenal coming up, and Liverpool have Luton. So it could very well be nine points yeah. if if the results don't go your way. I'm not, you know, I want Newcastle to get in the top four, you know what I mean? But I just feel that, like, you're not accepting like that points against West Ham and points against Wolves, they're, they're, they're not... I'm not saying it's the end of the world like you just said I said. I've never said that once. I'm just saying it's not a good result. And if you're nine points clear next week, you'll be looking back at this show going, yeah, it probably wasn't a good point, was it, at Wolves? Because now yeah, we're nine and points then and, then, and then if we're three points behind, because we go and beat Arsenal, not saying we're going to, but if we do, then we're looking at things very different. Things can turn around very, yeah, yeah, yeah. very quickly. Of course. Of Listen, course if you I, beat Arsenal, I will point. apologize. That's, point, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> we can talk about oh, it Absolutely. I would, you, I would I want to apologise to El da, uh, um, Little Dan uh, and big up Little Dan. I said to him, big up this team because Wolves, Wolves are, Wolves are a, a, a decent side playing some good football. Good but asking, he's asking me for an apology on here. No, no. no I said I will apologise to you if you beat Arsenal. You apologise for saying your team was in a title race. That's what you need to apologize. Why did I ever say that? How dare you? How oh, dare you? Please, please, oh, boy, please, please, Sam, Sam, flip it wow. up. Flip it up. Yeah, flip bring it. it. Find this, find you, this you, you boys all know, right, a few weeks ago, he was bigging it up. Look, look, look. Aaron right, knows, all right. right. Bigging you up. You're saying that you're in the title race and you're rubbing your hands together and you're saying we're here and we're here and all the rest of it, right? You apologize for I'm saying clear. you're in a title race when you were never, ever going to be in a title race. Safety. Never, never going to be in a title race, ever. Listen, so I apologize for saying that for a penalty, say. right, when you said you were in a title race with the likes of Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, when you were never, 
in when the did ring. I say, when you was this? You did. You know. Must have been Someone tried the clip. Must have been Sam Hall. Oh, this is going to go on forever. I'm going to help in. All gonna I'm gonna saying forever. is Sam Hall, clip it up, and then when they get spanked by Brentford, we can play it next Monday. That's what I'm going to say. Listen, we'll <laughs> see. But speaking of clipping up, right, by the way, if we beat Arsenal on Wednesday, I want to hear the first thing on this show. Do, 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 do. And I want to see Sam's face. I want to see Pox's face there with clown makeup on, right? Wednesday. Yeah. I'm not. Well, that, don't that go will happen if you beat us, man. Are you going to beat yeah. us Wednesday? Do you know what? Listen, this is West Ham. Moyes is a cup manager, isn't he? I oh, yeah. heard. He's a cup manager. <laughs> do you know what? It's going to be tough. We'll have to see what team they put out and what team we put out. I think we beat them. I think we beat Arsenal on Wednesday. We knocked them out of the Carabao. And then they go, oh, we didn't care about the Carabao anyway. Oh, it's Jim Put, but we don't care. And then we go, yep, yeah, in your face. Potts has the clown fake makeup on. Sam has the clown makeup on. And uh, everyone's a winner. And then, Pete, right, you go on and you smash them on the weekend. Because me and LB, unlike Potts and L, we care. We want to see Newcastle up there. We care. This is out of love, right? <laughs> and I would love it. If you beat them next weekend, so go and do it. Yeah, we'll be new to the top from in the cupboard, mate. And then Listen, I'll, I'll go. I'll go back. I'll get there. Number nine. Yeah, I'll get my third name. T-shirts. So much hate for Arsenal, man. If we play the right team, we should be able to beat West Ham. But if we don't play the right team, then I do worry because I don't know how serious we're taking this cup, man. We should be taking it seriously, in my opinion. But Arteta has different a difference of opinion. Pete, very quickly, Pete, what you uh, weekend Arsenal Newcastle? What because not going to be there before then? What what are you saying quickly? Um, it's going to be a tough game. It, it will be. Uh, you guys are coming off a of, uh, five nil win at Sheffield United. But it's St. James's Park. What I what I want is a different performance to what I I saw last season. Because uh, you beat us 2 0. We were the best team early on, but you guys scored us after that um, and, and were fantastic. Um, I want us to get in your faces. I want us to make it difficult. I want us to put everything on the line for that game. Um, and and I do think at St. James's Park, anything's possible. Um, I really do. Uh, so. A few players I'm, out, but you've got some coming back, and you are? Yeah, well, well no. Botman. Yeah, out of anyone, it'll probably be Botman, but even he is not probably guaranteed. Um, no I, Isaac, I would, no Botman, no Barnes, no Tonali, no uh, Murphy. Well, Murphy, we're not sure on because Murphy, I think we're waiting on results, but like he, he, he'll be a I hope, we, do. I hope he, we can beat him. We can't beat Newcastle without anyway. him players out. That's poor for me. That, but, they, that's I do cool. think on the back of that that um that the the team against Man United on Wednesday will be changed around a lot because I think I've got a feeling that Callum Wilson won't play. I've got a feeling that Gordon won't play because I think they'll try and save them for the Premier League game. Um yeah, yeah you it'll, 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 it'll be a good game. It'll be a good, good game anyway, because they always are. It will. Oh, we call it. It's always a good game. And I'm going. It's my birthday weekend, so I'm going to have a mare or I'm going to be buzzing. <laughs> oh, I hope you have a shit birthday. In the Thank <laughs> you. Well, love you too, brother. Thank you very much. I hope you have good beers in that, but I hope, I hope Newcastle ruin it for you. You hope the results but shit, I hope but I have a good time. Yeah. For everyone, I, I, I hope you guys have a drink and all that stuff. For all the Newcastle fans in the chat, if you see Pox, just buy him a beer, look after him. Come on, you know <laughs> you know what we do up in Newcastle. We like to welcome in the, the away fans and, and look after Appreciate them. Appreciate so. it. But, you it's know, a cracking night out, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, Newcastle's class, man. It's my favourite place to go for a night out. It's absolutely it's wicked. Best in so. the country, mate. It's the best. Oh, uh, without a doubt. Like, for me, it's, it's, it's hands down the best, man. So, yeah, fair play. Um, like to close, because I know Errol's got to shoot in a bit. Um, do you know what? I want to big up Liverpool, bit, actually, because I've, I've not been disrespectful to him, but I've kind of wrote him oh, off shit. a Liverpool, little bit too that. early. I wrote him off a bit too early in terms of they won't be able to defend. They ain't done enough. They ain't bought a CDM been quite impressive defensively in parts of late. I can't lie. I think they've been a bit underrated. I think it's gone a bit under the radar at times because I've not looked at their performance yet and gone, oh dear, they look shocking at the back. And I have done that before, certainly last season. I do think when I look at it, 
like for me, and I'll say this now, I think City will win the league. I've said that from the start and I've put Arsenal to come second. The only thing that will change that, unless Arsenal have a diabolical one, of course, is if Liverpool get a CDM and a centre-back in January. I think you'll come second then because I think you have got the goals in your team that just lifts you. Whoa. And that's my only doubt with Liverpool is that the CDM and the centre bit. I know you've got Graven Birch, who's been quality, he's almost like we can talk about, but an actual Thomas Party, Casemiro, Rodri, I don't think you've got that. And I think if yeah. you was to get something in there, you might be able to be pushed. And the only other thing I will say about Liverpool is I told everyone about Darwin Nunez and I stand by it. I think he's a top player and he's now starting to show it. That was all I wanted to say on Liverpool, Errol. No, fair, and, and and you've hit the nail on the head. The one thing I I will say is fucking thoughts and prayers to Louis Diaz's family. I hope absolutely. I, I hope yeah. all family members in that situation all get returned safely, sound, uh, and, and and timely, very speedy manner. Hopefully, it doesn't get dragged out for too long. Um, but in terms of Liverpool, I, I said it. The one thing I was prepared to stick my neck out on the line for from the start of the season was was having the best attacking line. I said it early doors, we've got the best attacking line in the league, not by a country mile, but I was confident that our attacking line on the day had the firepower to, to outdo any other you know, collective unit. I still think that's the case. I do believe there are better individuals and you can pick individuals from you know, Arsenal, Man, Man City, Tottenham. You, you can pick the individuals, but as a unit, there isn't a better from three slash five as what Liverpool are blessed with having this season for us. And especially with Darwin Nunes now really hitting that stride and hitting the heights that a lot of people hoped he would. And I think more out of anything else, rival fans just hoped he never would because he was frightened what they seen. The glimpses that they seen out of him and Benfica, he was frightened to think if that guy goes to Liverpool and can light it up there, it's going to be long for everybody else. And it's starting to get very long for other teams at the minute. He is a problem on all in all departments, whether it's his hold-up play, it's improved, his link-up play is improved, his finishing. I wouldn't necessarily say it's improved, but he's got... Well, great the other night when he hit the post for an open goal. That weren't no, great. No, oh, but, that's the worst miss I've ever seen. Wow. Everything up until that point was world-class. Everything up until that point was world-class. And yeah, of course, you, you should be finishing that. You, that's, you've got a slot that you've got to. But... I can cut him a little bit of slack and I can allow him for those moments because last season, in front of goal, when he didn't have too much to think about, he he was potent. He was able to find the back of the net. It was all the other bits, the running through on the goal, the drop on the shoulder to beat a man, the sitting to keep it down. He didn't have that in his locker last season or he didn't have the confidence to unleash that last season. This season, he has got it. Um, and to, to the defensive point... I said I will. I'm resigned to the fact that you know we might have to blow teams away this season, and 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 we'll have a few defensive errors in us that we just have to, as a byproduct, put up with. But I'm a bit like you, Potts. Even I've got to say, do you know what? Over the last couple of games, last few weeks, defensively as a unit, we've looked a lot better. We've still got, in my opinion, Billy, the best goalkeeper in the world in in, in the sticks for us. You know, other, other, fans, other players, my and FIFA might might say different, but in my opinion, still the best. I love that. The world. Billy's like, well, the awards don't say he is. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 I, and I still, I still think Virgil Van Dijk is the standard bearer for the best centre back in in the Premier League, and he's starting to show the signs that he is getting back. Nah, he's been good. He's been good again. To that top top level that we 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 we've been I think Diaz is better, but I, I do think Van Dyke has been up. He's been up. He's right there. Yeah. I, I think um, so. I, I, I'm pleased. I said I would. I was always going to reserve judgment on what this Liverpool side were capable of. A bit like Lawless until at least the ten game mark. I feel as though we we've got enough to battle on every front this season how far we will go. I expect us to go very far in the Europa League. Uh, I'd love us to come up against a certain opposition at some stage and, and take smiles off faces. But, you know, we'll see. I expect us to go far in that competition. I expect us to get a favourable run in the... He's on uh, mute. He's on mute. The, Is he saying something? The, in the Carabao said, Are you winning a trophy this season? I'm just saying, are you winning a trophy? Um... I don't yeah, see, I don't see why you win don't. the Europa League. You win the Europa I think, League. I think we could win. I think we could win the Europa League, and I think we could win the Carabao Cup if not go That's for the shot. FA Cup again. Uh, obviously, it just depends with the FA Cup a little bit in terms of what other priorities you've got cooking. And in terms of the Premier League, I know everyone's thinking, "Oh, will Liverpool go for it?" 
I just want us to be in and around it by January. If we're in and around it by January, I feel as though we can at least put the afterburners on and, and bear down City or pull away from City if that's what's needed. I think we've got that in our locker still. Um, but you've got, to, you've got to be in the mix think- to be able to do that. I always thought Liverpool would score goals, and I said that. And I remember me and LB talking about it, saying, yeah, we'll score goals. But uh, defensively, I'm not sure. LB, are you still... I mean, you swapped them around. You said Liverpool would be the ones, and then you went for Arsenal. Are you sticking with Arsenal and Liverpool together? Do you think one over the other? Or do you think all three, mate, at the moment? No, no. I think uh, I don't think there's much between Arsenal and Liverpool, um, to be honest with you. I, th- I think they're pretty close in terms of levels. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think Errol's right. They can blow, you know, Liverpool are more likely to blow teams away, you know, but I still don't fully trust their defence. You know, I hear what Errol's saying about the last couple of weeks or whatever, but I still not, I'm still not, I'm still not convinced. And with Arsenal, you know, I still think you've only played well in a, in, in a couple of games this season. I've watched a lot of Arsenal this year in the league. I've not been that impressed with Arsenal this year. I know he, he might say he's going for this more controlled game, whatever. You know, I'm just telling you my opinion. I don't, I've not been that impressed with Arsenal. I still think that as we okay. S- let me ask you then, LB. Have you been impressed by anybody then? If not by Arsenal, who has who's, who's gone? Because you put Arsenal second, so has nobody else really impressed you? To 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 make the jump to win the league. No, I've not seen no, that. No, so I mean, what I'm meaning, yeah, obviously that's a silly question, but what I'm saying is. Liverpool, then you put up there. Have they got? Have you gone? Cool, yeah. They look. I think they'll be in trouble. I'll be in trouble there. Or are they still like, nah? City is out in front, and it's just about no one else has really impressed me. Is what I'm getting at. Well, yeah, because I don't think I don't think anyone's done enough to win the league. I don't think anyone's done enough to close the gap. I think I've said before. I think Liverpool needed a DM. I still stand stand by that statement. You know, I think I don't think they'll go through the full season without a DM. Obviously, we don't know what's happened in January. With, you know, and, and and win the league without a DM and, and Arsenal still don't think they did enough in the summer. Still you know, don't think they did enough in the summer. The only thing that. I'll come back to on that though, LB, is there are only four, maybe five games in a, in a season, and, to, and that that can be the difference when it comes to a title. So it's it, it's not like I'm dismissing that, but there are probably only four or five games where a team like Liverpool need an out and out number six DM where we know we're not going to have the lion's share of the possession and we know that we're going to have to have that screen in front of the defence more often than not we're going to be the ones that have be the ball playing team have a lot of the possession dictate the tempo and, and the pace of the game and therefore if you've got three mobile lads that are basically two sixes and a six and two eight and a six and a half with an eight and a half in terms of McAllister and he's kind of having to do both like we've seen against the Forest game um, on the weekend, you're never really going to be in a situation where you need someone to be that guy. Don't get me wrong. In the games against City, it'd be brilliant to have another, you know, Declan Rice-esque, Partey-esque, Rodri-type player just blocking uh, the passing lane so Haaland doesn't get a sniff and, and keeping him quiet or keeping folding quiet. That'd be boss. Same against Arsenal. Having someone that could disrupt their flow of play with, with Odegaard and Jesus would be amazing. But, there aren't there aren't ten to twelve games of a season where we're going to be under that level of pressure. Last year when we did have a, a six in Fabinho, he didn't have the legs around him, so he was getting washed. Whereas this year, th- that midfield engine room has got legs for days, and I genuinely think it would be nice to be able to deploy one and, and, and hang your hat on him. But if we get to Christmas to January transfer window without a DM, and we're still in the mix within touching distance of City. Arsenal spares. Jürgen Klopp did it last year, got Gakpo, we needed something. The year before, when I got Diaz, we needed something. Just to close the gap in real time, the likelihood is that is the one area where we can go and get somebody. If they come in, it, it might not be too late, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah no, of that course. So that's what I said. That's what I said. I said it, if you know, you get to January and you make signings, then maybe. But I that's don't awesome. think I don't think Liverpool have enough. To go on and win the league, I think they can. No, I, I agree with that. I don't think they'll be a million miles away. I don't. I'm not saying you'll be a million miles away. I, I think you'll be within ten points, which you know is what, three, three, three games or so. And similar to Arsenal, I think again, Arsenal won't be too far. I just don't think any club's done enough 
Well, listen, at the moment, City are looking up at us, and the longer that stays, the, the better for me. That's the way I see it. I'd leave a point. Saying mind the gap pots, is that what you're saying? You <laughs> saying <mind> the <laughs> they're, in, they're in a gap. It's like a, a, a Nat's whisker or a gap in it at the moment. So, yeah, uh, mate, I can't talk. I'm looking up at Tottenham still, which I'm not happy about. So, we'll see what happens. Um, listen, guys, we are going to close it there because, well, it's gone on forever. It's been a lit show, lit panel, lit guests as ever. Lit in the chat as well. Make sure you do us a favor. Make sure you smash a like on this and subscribe to this channel but also do me a favor guys make sure you go and do exactly the same for these guys man because they're unbelievable support for the channel great reps of their clubs and all put out very very good content so make sure you go over to at the lawless and west ham fan tv av billy and total screamers it's lb pete over at twitter and loaded mag in ufc and of course errol on redmen tv and there's his twitter handle there solid set side up Guys, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you next time. I mean, this next one could be fun because I've got Lawless and Pete that I've got to take on this week. And it's not, it's not going to be fun, but uh, maybe it will be. We'll see what happens. As always, take it easy and up the Arsenal. Latest, people.